Hi, oh yeah, folks. Welcome. <laughs> oh dear. So we are getting on with writing this plugin. Um, so when we finished it last time, I think we had the. So we did the stopwatch first. The countdown works. Um, and the clock really is the major functionality left to go. I've got a little list actually. Let me just bring that over here. So I've got the tired day clock to implement. So I need to uh, do that. That'll give you the Minecraft time of day. Um, oh. It's always the way, isn't it? As soon as you start the camera, the nose, the, the nose starts going off. Uh, so yeah, good time of day on first, because that shouldn't take very long. Then at the moment it doesn't handle subtypes um, of blocks. So if you put um, wool, it'll only ever be white wool. It won't get the subtypes. So we'll add um, the subtype stuff in. That shouldn't take long. Changing the direction of the panels so that you can lay them at different angles. That's going to take a bit more time, but we need to get that done. Persistence. I just noticed I've got two number twos in here. Let's um, let's actually do some proper counting stuff. Um, Chagney direction. Yep, Chagney direction. These are just some quick notes I made. Don't judge me. Um, uh, number four, we need to get on with some persistence, which is when I shut the uh, um, shut the server down, um, then load it back up again. All the counters should still work. And the next one I thought is when you just if you destroy the sign that creates the clock, it should just delete the clock as well. That seems like a reasonable bit of housekeeping. Having got that, we've basically got the majority of the f all the functionality really there. So next step then is to start looking at what's the cost, what's the performance like. And then immediately when I started thinking about that, it occurred to me that um, the time updater currently processes just one clock. And then each clock will add its own time updater onto the work scheduler. Well, I thought maybe we could just have one time updater that looks for all the clocks and updates them all in one go. That might be a little bit less work for the scheduler to have to deal with, for example. So, um, And then we can also performance monitor all of the clocks very easily. So that's kind of the, the, the work list I'm going to do. I don't know if we're going to get all of that done tonight. I doubt it. Um, but we should at least get sort of one and two. We shouldn't take it very long at all. Three will probably be the majority of what we've been doing. Four shouldn't take too long, and then we can work out where we get to from there. So that's the plan. Hello to everybody who is on the stream. Thank you for joining me. Um, if you're not interested in coding, this is going to be really boring. If you're looking for Train Sim Live, that will be coming back next week. Uh, my new PC, super duper, super duper PC, um, is on order as of today. Uh, they're building it tomorrow, uh, testing it over the weekend, and if all is good, um, Tuesday is when uh, is when the they'll ship the machine Wednesday perhaps otherwise so they're thinking Thursday is when I'll have the machine but they're gonna see if they can get it to me a bit earlier than that so uh, hopefully that that means almost certainly a Friday stream uh, with trains possibly a Thursday possibly but unlikely a Wednesday stream so um, all is good uh, over the weekend I'm gonna be doing a um, Might be useful for each clock to come up as a separate item in the timings page. Possibly. Oh, yeah, I hadn't even thought. Yes, I should plug into that, shouldn't I? Had it. That's a good shout, actually. Um, I made a note of that. Um, so over the weekend, there may be um, someone else model railway streaming as well. Jimmy Bun. Hey, you walk on North Yorkshire Moors. Ah, superb. Okay, right. Let's get on and do this. So the first thing is the time of day clock. So... At the moment, I don't think I'm doing any. Um, so process a clock command. We're not really going to do any clock commands, are we? Because uh, when we create a clock, it's just a clock. There's not really a lot you can do about it. Hey, Brocrafter, welcome. Uh, so the clock is under time of day clock, funnily enough. So in here, we have this thing which starts that, sets all the materials up and gets the task timer running. Now I changed that in some of these, I think, haven't I? What's the countdown clock running at? Fives. Yeah, so the countdown clock is on five. Thank you for the f uh, the host, Flying Scotsman. So let's just change these to every five ticks. 
just to keep them the same. Okay. I think that's all I need to know about that. So get time to show is what needs to show the time. Now to get the time, I've got the world. I need to do world dot get full time. Now that returns me a number I think from well let's just find out shall we? Uh so get log uh no plugin dot get logger dot info time is and we'll print the time and we'll exit and that'll do for that. So now if I print I'm gonna make that always return zero. So that should do that. When will you be restarting Train Sim Live? Um so my near my um uh, my new PC is on order uh, and will hopefully be sometime next week. Right, well, if you were banned, James uh, Jimmy Bun, then you need to make sure that you don't get banned again. Right, probably means spamming or something. Why n when next week? Um, they the quote is for uh, Thursday, but they're going to see if they can get it to me for Wednesday. So uh, bank on bank on Friday, and if I can do a stream before that, I will. Okay, so I've got this. It's going to now print the time out. Okay, I'm just going to start by doing a build, not of the wrong plugin. That would be a bad way to start. Let's do a build of this, and then see what happens. If that gives me a number from 0 to 24,000, like I think it does, then it's dead easy to turn that into the time of the day, because there are 86,400 seconds in the day, and if that's 0 to 24,000, you multiply it by 3.6 to get a uh, scaled up to 86,400, and then you just pass that into the day formatter. Boom! Of course, it's not going to be that easy. <laughs> it's never that easy! Right, so... Uh, we have our new plugin we've just built. I need to go into plugins, delete the old one, move in that one, and fire up the server. Uh, do I do giveaways on Trains in Live? I do indeed. Occasionally, randomly. Oop, server is up. So, me did that load a bit faster than previously. Hmm, suspicious. Right, okay. So now if I refresh that, yay, it's come up. So if I join that server. So these are the old clocks that we were messing about with previously. So if I whap that and put... It's the... Uh, oh, I can't remember how you drive it. <laughs> Um, under on sign change, it is TOD name and uh, then nothing at all that really matters. So uh, TOD, has that got to be in square brackets? Yes, it does. TOD uh, name is Fred, and I don't care about the last one right now. Ignoring sign creation, it's not valid. Okay. Let's have another look. What have I done here? Oh, the first one has to be clock. <laughs> Twit. Oops. Put that there. Right. Uh, clock. Time of day, don't care, don't care. Right, so you can see on the bottom right there, it's now counting up. So that's telling us. And this is the time is showing zero, because we've told it to always show zero. Does that mean I'll have less crashes? I hope so. Um, but we shall see. So the time is now going up. Every time it ca it's, it's running a pulse, which means that we've got about 12,000. Now let me go and have a look. I'm just going to go and have a look on DynMap. Um, because... Dynemap will tell me. Oh no, Dynemap will tell me what the actual server is, not what this server is. Oh. Um. Uh, 
Let's just see how it goes. Let's watch the times. It's got up to 13,000 at the moment. It's getting dark. Uh, Brocrafty, you are more than welcome to join DIN down the Mineshaft server any time you like. It's a 24-hour server. Yeah, it'll be another coding stream tomorrow, as Flying Scotsman says. That's the plan, anyway. 14,000. Come on. So what it is, is there's two separate types of time. There's the time on my machine, which is about 25 past 8. There's the time within the Minecraft world. Um, can I do each number a different colour? No, I haven't really co catered for that. I could do. We could think about that later on. So what I want to see is what happens with this timer as it ticks on. Spamming the heck out of the log file, but never mind. Need to see if it goes up to uh, what time it goes up to. So nightfall is at twelve thousand, which is about right from when we had that, and end of day is twenty four thousand. So we're at 15,000. Hey there, C. Rogers. Will I be on DTM when not streaming? Um, at the moment, not not too often. Just because I haven't really got a lot of time, but I do try and get on there. What are we up to? 16,000 now, which it reckons is around about 10 o'clock. No, I should be able to time set 0, which sets it back to 0, and time set 23,500. Uh, it's very dawn like, and it looks like we get up to 24,000. So it looks like the suspicion is about right. Just make sure it rolls over at 24,000 and then we're good to go. Which it didn't. Interesting. What are you doing then? I wonder if it just keeps going up. Well, that won't be any good. You're supposed to be printing me a number from 0 to 24,000. Ah! So if it was going to be 48,000, so 47,500, no, 47,500, so the time's just, oh no, it's just got dark because it's weather. Weather clear. I don't think slash time set actually works very well. 
as I think it's still counting up as if it was 0 to 23,000. Oh no, okay, it's got the it's not naught to twenty four thousand, it's um you have to div it by twenty four thousand. Uh sorry, mod it by twenty four thousand. You have to mod it by twenty four thousand to get the actual time of day. Because this is the number of ticks since the server was started. <laughs> right. Let's shut the server down. So, if I go back to the time of day clock and comment out the spam, so I'm going to say that the server time is world dot get full time modulo 24,000. So that'll keep giving me a number between 0 and 24,000. I then want to have uh, server time times 3.6. Is it going to be that easy? It's not going to be that easy, is it? From a double? Oh, 3.6, of course. Long. Times it by 3.6 and then turn it back to a long. You'll be a li lose a little bit of precision, but that's fine. Let's see what that does. It can't be that easy. I must be missing something. This is going to crash the server, I know. Hey Jill and Chris, welcome. Right, okay, so let's um put another copy of that plugin over there. And uh, no, I probably should start the server before we connect to it. This is like learning Japanese. <laughs> to be honest, this is not a good way of learning it. Because I'm not trying to teach you, so I'm skipping over stuff. So no, this isn't this isn't a good way of learning it. <coughs> uh okay, we're up and running. Connect to the server. Let's come down here and put Clock Todd back in. Clock. Remember, we've got to put these in every time because they uh, they don't persist yet. Well, they didn't seem to do an awful lot. We didn't get any exception. Oh, it is going up. Ah, okay. So slash time set twelve thousand. It's forty three. That's only one twenty two. I think I got that wrong. <laughs> oh, you like the picture of this flying Scotsman, Chris? Yeah, it's just awesome being around flying Scotsman. F three for the time. Oh yeah, of course. Where is it? It's on here somewhere. Oh, light. Local difficulty. Day zero. Interesting. What have I messed up here then? So if the full time gets to 24,000. Oh, hang on. <laughs> this is milliseconds, not seconds. You twit. Disconnect. Stop that. 
I'm going to times it by a thousand before I convert it back to a long, so I get less pr loss of precision. In fact, you won't get any loss of precision, really. Um, not what, when you multiply it by a thousand. Right, that's done. Let's move it into the into the place. Put the thing into the place. Run the other thing and see what happens. Come on, server, hurry up. Oh, you yeah, for repair? Yeah, it's flying Scotsman. I, sorry, not flying Scotsman. It's the uh, evening star. I want to see out. She's lovely. Right, we are connecting. Clock, Todd, Fred, Fred, Fred. That's even... It's like a seconds and minutes clock at the moment. So if that's like a seconds and minutes clock, I need to get the hours on, so I need it to, to be divided down. Hmm, interesting. Interesting. See, I told you it wouldn't be that easy. Right. Let's kind of remind myself what stopwatch clock is doing. Current time millis minus the start time. Multiply by 1200, not 3600. But that wouldn't get me 26,400. <coughs> That's going up to a... Th do I multiply it by... Th so the server time... It's the number of seconds is 86,400. In a day. So that is 24 hours. This is only a minutes and seconds counter, that's why. This is only a minutes and seconds counter, so um, I've got... That's the number of that, so I now need to divide the whole lot by 60. Um, so I need to get... If I divide that by 60, then that will turn it from giving me seconds to only giving me hours and minutes, I think. I should probably just actually work this out, but... <laughs> Stab randomly in the dark until you find the answer. Right. Stop that. Plugins. And run it. Divide by 1200. What can possibly go wrong? Absolutely, more man. Absolutely. The fate of the world is not hanging on me getting a counter work in Minecraft. Whether I look like a total plank, maybe. But that's not ever stopped me in the past, so never mind. Todd, uh, Fred, Fred, and click done. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! It says it's 4 a.m. in the morning. I think its time is wrong. Oh, it needs shifting. That's why. It needs shifting. If I look at the the clock thing, it's um. So if it reckons it is 4:26, that suggests that's the time. So 
So if I time set 12,000, it does go to 12 o'clock. So at 12,000, it's actually 6 p.m. According to uh, Minecraft thingy bob here. Actually, 12,000 is supposed to have come up 10. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Why would it do that? So it's time set 23,000. Puts it up to there. So we're finding ourselves back towards daytime again. When you went to York, yeah, I picked up three or four pictures of Evening Star. I put them on the Facebook already. Why this? Why that? The answer? Magic. Absolutely. So the time it's showing is wrong, but that's fine. We can fit, I can adjust the time. That's not a problem. Right. Oh, on the turntable. Oh, nice, Chris. Yeah, I saw it buried away. Right, let's stop that. Right, so in order to be correct, um, that needs to be old main and electric set. Oh, very good. What is it, JC Gaming Live? What train is it? <coughs> so that needs to be. So when this is reading zero, it should actually be returning. 36, 360? 360. Oh. Yeah, so 0 is actually 6 a.m. Why do you do these things? You think it's a 4MT, 75 on? 4MT, very nice. That's interesting, looking at this, 0 to 23,000 is only 19 hours and 10 minutes. There's 24 hours in the day, fool! Oh, it could because there's only 50 seconds, I see. <laughs> Yeah, so when I get to 18,000, it's when we wrap right. 18,000 is midnight. So, if I get the full time. It's right, there's something smells sort of burny down here. That is on rather hot, it has to be said. Let me turn that down. Right. Deduct 6,000. Then mod, then times by 600. Now I've got bolt falling out. Oh my word! Let's try what John has suggested. So we get full time. Uh, minus 6,000, then modulo, and then times by 600. 
times by 600 and then we all just do server time we'll see what that does maths is not my strong point in case you hadn't noticed right plugins Get the server visible. Thank you for the host, JC Gaming. Right, let's connect to that. Uh, weather clear. Lock, Todd, Red, Red. Ah, now we, it says we're at 9, but it's going up rather quickly. That's because it's in the wrong, it needs to be divided by 60 again. Yeah, that's, so that's still not right. Are we doing TS Live after? Nope, I, I haven't got a machine that can actually run the, um, run the game at the moment, but it's on order, it will be with me next week, hopefully. Um, so I'm knocking 6,000 6, off. The time 600 is wrong, okay. Yeah, next week should be when Train Sim Live is back. Keep an eye on Facebook and Twitter, or uh, if you look below, times by 10 instead. Oh, okay. If you look below on um, on Twitch, on the channel below me, I think Twitch have a thing up there, which is my... But they've got a thing like twi Twitter and Facebook wall, because, you know, the world needs another one. Um, and... Um, so if you keep an eye on there, if you don't have Facebook or Twitter, then try there. What happened to the computer? Um, well, it was one. I've I've been borrowing computers since I started streaming, pretty much, and the latest one that I was borrowing died, so I gave up borrowing. <laughs> and thought, you know what? I need to be able to rely on my own stream, uh, on my own equipment. So um, now that I've got. Um, how many 24 hour streams do I need to do to catch up? Yeah, I'm not doing 24 hour streams. <laughs> do them twice a year for charity because they're murderous. Um, yes, I thought now, now I can earn money through YouTube and so forth. Um, I thought I would invest in a PC. So yes, it's a monster of a machine. It's coming next week. We shall do some extra. We shall do some extra streams. I'm thinking also of starting an hour earlier at 8:30. We'll see how that goes down. Um, I may bring it a bit earlier still, but we'll give it a week at 8.30 and see how it goes. Clock. Todd. One. Fred. Fred. So it's 3 a.m. apparently, so let's, uh, that doesn't sound right. Time set 12,000, should put it at 6 p.m. No. Time set 23,000, let's put it, so we're only getting three hours shown now. <laughs> Might be good to have DTM and TSL start at the same time. Well, DT uh, TSL can start at 7.30 because, frankly, you lot do most of the work. Um, you sell, The two Johns do most of the work. Um, whereas, um, modular arithmetic's not my point. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire up Excel and do this, do this the way I would normally do it. Um, and we'll... Uh, I'd like to see it. 
I, I like to see the maths because I'm not very good at visualize. I can visualize code and code data structures. No trouble at all. So zero, one thousand, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand. Right. Let's do that lot down to down to wherever we need to go to, which is go for twenty-four thousand. Get rid of all this junk. Oh, and no, I will leave all that junk in there because we can then see what multiple days look like. Now, if I take that and what was I doing before? Because what I was doing before was right. It was just so it's times three point six divided by a thousand. Uh, that times three point six divided by a thousand gives me that. So let me flap that down here. So that gives me uh, a number up to 86.4. That obviously wasn't right. No, it's because it was uh, modulo 24,000. Modulo 24,000. Times 3.6 times 1,000. Oh, I need to do um, mod. Yeah. Get rid of that one. See how that one looks. That's sort of extreme. I tell you what. Let's just keep it simple. I'll do one one component at a time. If I modulo now I've got the cycle. And then I want to multiply that up so that it becomes a factor of um eighty six so it becomes up to eighty six thousand four hundred. Which is times by 3.6. I can reduce the formula down in a minute. Now we're going up to 86,400. So now I've turned Minecraft time of day into our sort of time of day in terms of seconds. Now I need to turn that so that it cycles round because um, at the moment. See, 1,000 at 3,600 is going to give me an hour. Two hours, three hours, four hours, five hours, and so forth. But in actual, so what I'm going to get is one hour, two hours, and so forth. What I actually want is that that one at 1,000 is seven. So if I was to just add very crudely, um, six hours onto there, which is six times sixty, which is three hundred and sixty, equals that plus three sixty. No, an hour is. <sighs> hmm. You lost me. Yeah, I've lost myself. So that's fine. So 3600 gives me 1 one o'clock in the morning. I want it to give me 7 o'clock, so I need to add 6 hours to it. So 1 hour is another 600. Oh, it's 3600. Yeah, I just realised, John. Uh, that would give me 1 hour. So that turns 1 into 2. I want to turn 1 into 7, actually. So it's times 6, yeah. <laughs> that now gives me the correct time for 7. Now, if I now multiply that down, and let's see what it looks like. Because this isn't going to work either, I think. Because now the whole world is going to be... 
starting at 7, going up to about 20, 31, and then going back to there again. So I need to, I need to rotate it wrong, differently. This feels like it shouldn't be this hard. <laughs> Deduct the time before the modulo. Yes. Yes, that makes sense. This is the modulo, isn't it? Alright, so let's insert the row there. So if we minus 6,000 from here, okay, equals that, minus 6,000. That's going to do that. I could put that in there. What are you doing? Go away. Right. So that's given me that. Now I need to make that operate on B, not A. So now my days have shifted. You're now working on C, which means that 6000 is 0. So that's now going to give me 0, which is lunchtime. So it's actually 12 hours out now. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten o'clock. So 16,000 is ten o'clock. It is. Eleven, twelve, so 18,000 is midnight. So it's now 12 hours out. So that's subtracting six hours. I want to subtract... 18 hours. Okay, add 6,000. Okay, that probably makes more sense, doesn't it? <laughs> Push that down there. Wow, well now what have we got? So 18,000 is now midnight, correct? One. Right, this is now correct answer. So this is the answer I want. And this answer is that, plus 6,000, modulo times 3.6. So if I just summarise that in one, it's uh, that, plus 6,000. Ow! Press the home key and confused it. Um, I need to modulo it, and then I need to times it by 3.6. So hopefully now I get the same answer as all that other working. Looks like it. Right, we have our answer. So the answer is essentially that. We put that in. Let's uh, shut that down. Stop that. And... That was what we got from a clip uh, from Excel. So it's the time plus 6,000. And then it is moduloed with 24,000 and times by 3.6. And convert it to a long. That then needs to be divided so that it's in. So I want 60 at the moment to give me 1. So I actually need to divide that by... <laughs> so 60 will give me 1am in the morning, which is that one. That divided by 60 to 60. Okay, so I just divide it by 60. And divide the whole thing by 60. I'm going to make that 60.0f. That way it will do a, a, um, a floating point calculation. And then we return that. Are we there now, folks? Are we there now? Is that is that enough maths for tonight? I mean, I'm just about done, I tell you. <sighs> My 
brain hurts now. Give me a nice, warm, cosy database any day. Right. Put that in there. You think you're getting the time in millisecond, not ticks, and you're working out from ticks. No, it gives it, I, mean, I checked it before, and it, it, um, it's behaving. It's, it's supposed to give me the time in ticks, according to the documentation, anyway. I should probably start the server before we try and connect to it. Let's do this in the right order. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying that... Um, <laughs> As far as I know, it's ticks. Let's find out, shall we? Let's find out how spectacularly wrong this is. Clock. Todd, Fred, Fred. Done. I'm going to go ahead and say that's not doing anything at all. No errors. Nothing at all. Oh no, we have one. Does this thing not realise how much calculations we just did in Excel? So we're only getting one. I wonder if that's the hour now. Have I multiplied it by... Yeah, really, that's really slow time. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it and I'm actually going to start logging that time again. And then what I'm going to do is... Uh, time calc world dot get full time plus 6000 Let's do that bit. I need to bracket that, otherwise it gets very confused that I'm trying to modulo a string. That does need another one. Thought so. Right, let's run that. Yeah, math just doesn't add up for me either. Right. Welcome to the Matt, Matt Fails at Math stream. Right. Run the server. This will tell us what we're dealing with anyway in terms of numbers, which make we can actually sort of relate it more to real life. Matt Maths Live, yeah, see that's not a show I would want to watch, I have to say. So time set zero. That's going up in ticks because that's going up in fives every time it pulses, which is and it's pulsing every five ticks. 
So that's definitely ticks. Now according to the list, once we get to... So 6,000. So 7,000 should return 13. So that's looking fine. Now if I time set 23,500 we've cycled round already, which is right. Math, math stream, really quickly, either it's a challenge or you just can't talk. <laughs> So when we get to 24,000, we get over 6,000. So that's working fine. That component is working fine. Right. So let's stop that. No, let's stop that. Let's spell it correctly and it works far better. So having got that, we then times it by 3.6, which is what that's doing. And then we're dividing it by 60 in the in the alt, in the uh, in that calculation. So if I now do that divide by 60, yeah, divide by 60 is the wrong answer, I think. Divide by 60 is the wrong answer. because it needs to be times a thousand because the time is in milliseconds god dear oh dear so it feels quite egregiously too long actually then why don't I just times it by 3600 and get rid of the uh, the extra component from that are you happy now? right you knew there was a millisecond somewhere. Yeah, the millisecond is that the um, the timer itself uses it. Right. Right. This is it. Yeah. This is going to be the uh, the time component finished and working. on the server come on thirty six hundred divided by sixty is six so oh, I could times it by sixty yeah all right well we will consider an optimization in a moment let's see if we're even working first it's not a coding stream it's a math stream yeah we'll get on to some coding shortly <laughs> Right, we is connected. Clock, Todd, Fred, Fred, done. 6.38, see now the server starts up. If I time set 0, 6 a.m. We have a clock. Now time does go faster in the Minecraft world, that's fine. That clock should be going faster. And according to this... 10 o'clock in the morning is at 4,000. So time set 4,000. Boom! And then midnight is at 18,000. And seriously, it got dark! We got there. Told you we'd get there in the end. You probably didn't believe me, and you probably have every reason not to believe me. But we got there in the end. Right, time set zero. Good. Right, so now we've got... We actually have a working clock, folks. Woohoo! Right. Now, we will look at that optimization because what I don't want to do is write a Minecraft plugin which slaughters the... or well, performs unnecessary calculations. I'm going to keep a copy of that one so that if, it, if I mess it up now, I don't have to... Uh, rethink how we did it uh, 
I deleted the wrong character. That's not a great start. And I think I'm going to get rid of the log spam. <coughs> Pressing all the wrong buttons here. I think I've got the, m the sensitivity on my mouse set up too much. Right. Runner up. It's nine eleven already. Did you know that there are ten types of people in the world? Those who know binary and those that don't? Clock. Todd. Fred. Fred. Fingers crossed. Time set zero. Time set 18,000. Boom. Right, so the clock's working and slightly less inefficiently than it was before. Right. So that's good. Happy with that. Job done, done. Right, block material, uh, the sub material data thingy. Um, so what that is, is that at the moment in the code, we get four material. Um, where do I get that? That's on sign placed, I think. Did I say OMR this weekend? I think that's the plan. Um, Haddock, uh, I'm going to get the VPN server upgraded and um, we'll see um, uh, if that all works then we'll give it a good test I mean we might stream some bit at the same time so yeah we need to get the we'll, my goal is to get the VPN server upgraded and then we'll get um, we'll get everybody else upgraded and then we'll see whether or not we can get a session going I'm sure Dad won't object to getting the railway running um, okay, so we're getting. Oh, here we go. Lock dot get block dot get type. Now get type is getting us a material. Now if I look at lock one dot get block dot get um, type, it's getting the material. There is also a get data, which gets the metadata for that block. Now if I write, and I'll, what we'll do is we'll prove this. Um, We'll do um, get logger dot info um, data for block one is lock one dot get block dot get data. So what that's going to do now? Oh, get data so it's deprecated. Okay. Well, that's not useful. is the function I'm looking for then because I want to get I mean let's have a let's have a, I don't want to use deprecated functions that's very bad form because deprecated functions could disappear in a uh, in the next version um, so we don't want to do that we want to find the right way of doing it currently DK designer, and uh, at the moment I am. Um, you think it's metadata? Do you had it? Okay, let's have a look. Okay, I need to know what the metadata is then. Right, let's have a look. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm doing Minecraft plugin development. Uh, DK designer, and so bucket Java API get block subtype what's under the help for block C 
See Rogers having issues in the Nether Portal. You go in your mine and come to Nether and you come out. You go to Mr. Trankhouse. That's because the Nether portals um, lock on to each other. Um, if you you can't have two Nether portals too close together, it just doesn't work. Um, it'll always jump to um, whichever one it fancies at the time, really. Let's get metadata in here. Oh, what plugin am I making? It's um a clock. It's block state. I wondered if it was block state. Uh, so it's uh, it does a countdown stopwatch. Uh, sorry, a stopwatch that counts up, a countdown clock that goes down. It's got the time of day clock, and it puts them in big plugins, uh, big plugins, big blocks, up so that you can see them from you know a way away. Ah, material data is inside the get state uh, for a block state. Okay, so I want to get block no get state dot get No, still not got it. Get data. You're going to tell me that's that's deprecated, are you? Get data returns the material data. Aha! Dot get item type and get data. Right. Let's see what that does. No, that's deprecated as well. Oh, you have to cast it to wool, and then you can get its colour. Oh, that's nice and generic, isn't it? So what I need then is block. So get block will get me the actual block. I can then place copies of that block. That would probably do better, actually, than just getting the type. So what I actually want to do is get the block. And I probably want to... can't clone it, no. Can I do that? No. Okay. I was trying to see if I could take a uh, a copy of the block rather than actually referencing the block. JC Gaming, um, I'm using um, Ozocraft, yeah, as easily confused says. So that gets me the block. I can then well, I need to be able to create copies of the block though, so that when I place it, because when we go into Digit Renderer, we're going to do a set block gets it and I'm going to want to set that somehow so block has subclasses does it let's have a look at the uh, let's have a look at the <laughs> type hierarchy according to that it doesn't have sub oh, maybe it wool is an inst is a s interface what Random help, thank you. Telly Jalad, can you ask a question? Of course you can. Ask away. So if block dot get type material dot wool.
That's right, I'm just having a look. All to block dot get state. Ah, that's a bit more interesting. Right, let's do lock one. Get block. I thought it'd be easy to get the subtype, but apparently that's too much to ask for. So get state gets me that. So a block state. So wool is a block state. So can I do a set block state? Set type and data. I'll bet that's deprecated. Yes, it is. <laughs> it must be in the metadata. But how do I find out what the metadata is? Right, OK, let's try something here. So, block state uh, b equals lock one dot get block dot get state. If b instance of wool, then wool wool equals wool uh, b. Need to import some stuff. So then I can say get logger dot info uh, found wool wool dot get color dot to string. Don't really need to do that. Right now, what I want to do is so B is block state. When will I be streaming down the mine shaft? They are every um, every Wednesday. Telly Delad, do I know how it works in code when you want to remove a block in Minecraft? Set it to air. Every block has to be something, so if you want to get rid of a block, set it to air. There's a block type called air. <sighs> so. What I want to do now is get hold of the metadata from the block state. From block. So lock one dot get block dot get metadata metadata key can I just get all the metadata that would be really useful get A I R, not error. <laughs> Bucket block dot get metadata. Your block state dot update true. But you can't call block dot get data, that's wrong. I hate reading old things. Only Wednesday. Yeah, DK Designer, and it's really only um, on Wednesday I do the uh, Minecraft, because the rest of the week I do Train Sim Live, when I've got you know a computer that will do it. So I can do a get state. So if I was to take a copy of get state, the question is, could I then set the block to that? So if I did lock one dot get block dot state, I can only do a get state. I can't. I can do a set data. So I can't set a block based on a state. Block metadata.
<sighs> Sorry, this is a bit, bo a bit more boring than normal. I don't think it's in metadata. I really don't, because that seems to be for something else. Or stuff that we shouldn't be playing about with. How can I set a block to a specific colour of wool? That's a pretty good art question. You have to set the metadata. Yes. Item stack material one by four. Die colour dot red. Oh, Dave! Oh, ouch! Uh, Fierce Gaming, am I going to do Train Sim later? No, because this machine won't run Train Sim. Um, that's one of why I'm doing this, to be honest, because I was going to do this, so I thought I'd share it anyway. Um, but new machine that runs Train Sim is coming next week. So, item stack creates it. Let's have a look at the parameters for item stack. Can I use what it's saying? Won't tell me anything until it knows about it is. So I can create <coughs> a material. See that's deprecated. Material type. Material dot wool. Right. Honestly, this should not be this hard. <laughs> That's wrong. That's all old. That's old API. Stop talking and rubbish. Set type ID and data. Oh, interesting. I wonder if that's that's probably deprecated as well, isn't it? Lock one dot get lock dot set type ID and data. Yep, that's different. Anything that references data is deprecated. So they have a new, clever, super duper way of doing it, which is not how that works, because that's just using data. There we go. They're deprecated. What do I do? Closed is unclear what you're asking. Why is it unclear? Yes, it still works, but it's the wrong way of doing it. But no one really knows how to use it. I love Stack Overflow sometimes. So the advice on that one is to do it the wrong way. Yes, they want to move to enums, absolutely, which makes entirely a lot of sense. But that uh, that guy was saying it's deprecated, but here's how you use it. <laughs> That's not the right answer. <laughs> Give him the right answer. See you later, JC Gaming Live. Uh, Fierce Gaming, how much was a rail driver? Um... Well, I didn't buy it in dollars. Um, I bought, uh, I got it in pounds. And when I bought it, it was about 130, 140 pounds. So I don't know what that is in dollars. Use xe.com to find out. Um, but nowadays, I think they're about 200 dollars. You think metadata key refers to an MBT tag? You could be right, actually, yeah.
set durability to the color value. What? So there's a durability on colorable things? Oh, I'm going to be sick if that's right. Get block dot set durab. No. Can't possibly be working like that. <coughs> State dot set dur no. Why do you keep putting a B? Get state. Dot get. Data. Dot get. Get the item. Type. Dot. There's no set. Ah! Oh. Let's have a look at what Haddock has just come up with. Oh, you were just looking at the same example I was looking at, I think. Except edge is being a pain. Yeah, unfortunately, it snaps quite um, quite on a wide range. You have to remember that the Nether is also eight times smaller than the rail than the the, the normal world. So if you are um, yeah, for every eight blocks in the real world, there's only one block in the Nether. So if you've moved it 32 blocks, it's barely moved in the Nether. Uh, what you can do is you can convert nether coordinates to overworld coordinates and if your portal is precisely at the right location then it will always lock onto that one so that's the other thing you could do go to your portal in the nether get its coordinates um, and then get exact set your other portal in exactly the same um, uh, in exactly the same place on the uh, overground by mapping the coordinates up uh, and you'll find that that helps I cannot believe this is as confusingly difficult as it is. It should be significantly easier than this, just to do what we're trying to do. John, I'm not sure what this is supposed to be telling me, actually. Never mind. Oh. Yeah, that basically was the thing I was looking at before.
How was the trip up to Yorkshire Rail Museum? It was really good, actually. Yeah, the National Rail Museum was a really good trip. Really enjoyed it. I got to sit in the uh, driving seat for Flying Scotsman. See you later, Ninja Joker. So we have a colourable thing. So we get the material data, which is this bit. And if it's a colourable, but I can set data, can't I? Lock one dot get block dot get state dot set data material data. Ah, interesting. So material data. So you're just getting type at the moment, whereas if I got data. No, but that's. What's that supposed to be returning? What? Get block dot get. No, I don't want to get that. Uh, get type dot get data. That turns the material. Right, okay, that's better. Get type dot get data. So that gets me the actual material. Uh, material data. So set for material now needs to take a uh, material data and I need to tell it what that looks like. Good. I uh, don't need that anymore. Let's get rid of it. Now I've broken all of the classes which is fine. I now need to use the uh, Im the material data correctly. So these now need to input material data. And for material needs to be a material data. Of course it doesn't know what material data is. Yeah, there is proof of it on my Facebook page. Uh, they don't really have a 373 power car, Mole Man. It's sort of a plastic mock-up. If you look on my Facebook page, you can see it. It's sort of a plastic mock-up of the front bit of a, of a 373 power car. So it's not actually a 373. And it's actually quite nice, because it's inside the, um, a tunnel, a mock-up of the tunnel, so a cross-section of the, of the tunnel as well. It's quite nice. It's quite a good view, actually, because you stand in the right place. You've got the Zero Series Shinkansen the Eurostar and then the HST and you can take a picture of all three of them together which is pretty awesome actually. So time up data needs to now take that in there as well otherwise than that we're good. I'll fix time up data in a minute. I'm gonna make all these changes and it's not gonna work and I'm gonna cry. to tell you what material data is. That's that one done. And that needs material data. They have a power car. Well, it wasn't anywhere I saw it, put it that way. All oh, right, certainly wasn't there when I uh, when we were there. It was um, round about where that is is pretty much where the Deltic and is the where the Deltic is actually. I think, yeah, I think that's where the Deltic is. Those next. So tire set block is going to take material data. Render base is going to take material data followed by material data. And that needs to be fixed as well in a minute. Those need to take material data to get everything else. Yep, everything else but main is now going well. Render base, 
I need to fix in time renderer uh, render time and render base they need fixing so we'll do those next so set block is going to take material data render base is going to take material data followed by material data and that needs to be fixed as well in a minute those need to take material data render digit in the digit renderer now needs fixing but in the meantime I'm going to block dot set data no get type dot set data What? Returns a material. I'm sure we had a set data a minute ago. Apparently not. So I told you we'd get to the end and it wouldn't work. Mallard is going in its place. Oh, that would be nice. I could have swore a minute ago we were setting the material. Lock one dot get block dot set get type dot set no. Oh, I thought we were onto something there. Create it to a material. Apparently, I can't. You got the end of May, excellent. May need to go into the chunk. I, I can see I might need to, but I'm. I'm. That feels like a really, really un, unfortunate amount of hacking. So I'm loath to do that. I wonder if I can do like a get material and use pull it out of the enum that way. But then how do I get the name? So get material would get me one, then how do I get it? What's the value of? No. Let's see what get material does. Googly boogly! How much is a car park? Uh, nine pounds. So it doesn't look like get material 
copes with subs. This is unbelievable. Well, that Flying Scotsman's not going to get repaired on its own, you know. <laughs> am I going to put the coding streams on YouTube? Yeah, I am. Let's have a look. Yeah, as long as you can cast it to wool, you're fine. But what about all the other things that have got subtypes? There's quite a lot of different things that have got subtypes. A lot, of it's, a lot of it's what's going on. Me getting completely confused because something that should be very, very simple, Bucket seemed to have made incredibly hard. Hmm. I'm trying to write a plugin that will just take the details, get the dye colour of a material. Right. a meter that's a long way to go <laughs> five hours driving <laughs> so I'm gonna get that get the type not get the material data that gets me a material data Metadata? No, that's not what I wanted. Material type, so it's material. That's just using the wrong way of doing it. I 
I love it when someone makes a suggestion on these forums and they actually have no clue whether it will even work. Use deprecation, unless you can find anything else. No, never use deprecated methods. I'm going to start ranting in a minute. If you don't believe this is possible. What? Wow, they're really going to make you do that, are they? So you have to do lock one dot get block dot get type dot. So that gives me a material. Dot set. So what is wool? get state dot get data dot get state dot get data text material data oh get state dot set data. oh there it is it's get state right we're back on track so i need to do block dot get state dot set data material boom set block needs to be a material thingy which is um, new material material data dot no oh, I need to create a material data for air hmm interesting material dot air dot get data boom what are you moaning about set block still got the wrong parameters no it's material data okay so cast it to material data Ah, so get data is returning something that extends material data. I don't get why that's not good enough, frankly. Right, let me just clear that out for the time being. So we need to fix render digit. So these are going to take material data. And then we're going to tell it what material data is. That's going to do get state dot set data. All the air ones need fixing. Material data. Have I enjoyed any of the mod packs departed with Tinker's tools? I don't know quite what you're asking there, Chris. Got this horrible feeling this isn't going to work. It's only going to set half of it. <laughs> right, 
Right, so the only thing we've not got compiling now is anywhere we need to specify air. I think you could do that, it's a C sharp thing. <laughs> I haven't looked at Tinker's tools, no I've never even heard of that one to be honest. You know what, I'm just going to comment out these air ones and see if what we've got even does what we want before I start worrying about it, because if this kind of works then we can carry on investigating it, but I've got this real sinking feeling that we're actually now setting the other half of the story not the bit that we actually want. So if it was wool it would get changed to the right colour but it wouldn't necessarily set it to wool. That's what I think is going to happen now. So we're no, no longer not compiling, so let's just run it and see what happens. What I might need to do is do the material and the material data. That makes a lot of sense actually. So let's see how badly this breaks. Oh, we're at 10 o'clock and I've barely done the second job that I wanted to do. I've got the big job to do yet. Yeah? Ridiculous. Right, so, what I'm going to do is get some purple wool in there, put that out, put that purple wool in there, put a sign, clock, Todd, one, two, three, one, two, three, go. Oh dear, horrifically bad, bang, 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 going wrong horribly, wow. Let's, uh, I've got no pause button on this computer. <laughs> That's no use, I've got no pause button. It's not of type material data, found a uh, something of type wool. So set data. Hold the scroll bar. Oh, that's not a bad, but bad idea. So get state dot get data is returning a material data. You know what? Before we do anything else, I'm just going to say in here. Get those. Put them up here. And I'm just going to do a test function. We'll get test working. So private void test. 
should have done this in the first place. Right, so we get the location. Uh, let's pass the uh, sign change event event into there. Right, so now we're going to get access to the two locations. What I want to do is get material. Material data. Which is in the material. One dot get block dot get state dot get data. Why don't you know about that? And then in that instance, I'm going to do lock one dot set. Lock one. Oh, I'm going to create a new location. Lock three. New location, uh, lock one dot get x plus two, lock one dot get y, lock one dot get z. Needs a world on the front, doesn't it? Yes, event dot get player dot get world. So now, we do lock three dot set. I'll get block dot set type to the material lock three dot get block dot get state dot set data data. So if I run that now in theory it will pass event into there. See what that does. I think it's going to error in the same way. And what I'm going to do is comment this out so that we don't create the sign. That way we don't get all the spamminess. If I can get it replicating one block, I can get it doing what I need to for the rest of it. Uh, going to be gone. I'm building a clock plugin for Minecraft um, and timers and stopwatches and things, but I'm having difficulty getting subtype of material information out. So, for example, the colour of a bit of wool. I can get the fact that it's wool, I just can't get the fact that it's red wool, which is what I'm struggling with at the moment, but I'm getting there, I think. Well, I'm deluding myself into thinking I'm getting there. So the idea is in here, if I put uh, clock Todd one two three one two three and do that, see it puts a white one there, not a purple one, but it didn't break. So that's not you know terrible. Clock Todd one two three one two three, white one. So. Daniel Kern of America. No, new PCs next week. Have I used the Surface Book often since I got it? Yeah, the, my Surface tablet gets used all the time at work. Right. So, in here then, get block dot set type material. Block three dot get block dot get state dot set data to what we got down from material data. So that's wrong. That doesn't work. So that's really useful. I think this will be under a thousand lines of code to be simple as it started. Um, yeah, well a lot of this stuff is commented out so it's uh, this isn't a lot of code it's just awkward. Um, Oh bucket! Why are you why are you not even telling me? It wouldn't be so bad. I don't mind if it's difficult as long as you're going to tell me. B dot get state dot get data instance of wool. So let's see what I can figure out from that. Because the thing is, it's not just wool. There are a number of things that have colours. 
Output mat and data to the console, see exactly what it is. Yeah, okay, we can do that. Uh, get logger dot get info no dot info mat mat dot get class dot get name and data data dot get class dot get name. Well, now what does mat dot has it got to string? Yeah, it's got it to string. Let's try it. Get logger dot info mat mat dot to string uh, data data dot to string right let's try that you confuse with all the code it doesn't help that at the moment I'm just exploring. I'm trying to figure out how to make the API uh, let me get some information and set it back again. And uh, so I'm trying lots of different things out, and it's sort of all a bit all over the shop, to be honest, at the moment. I thought these first two jobs would be the easiest ones, and they've turned out to be difficult. Yes, Slayer. Um, it's normally just the yeah, class name and the hash code, but you never know if they've been overwritten, so I thought I'd print them out and see. Right, so let's wipe that out and put Clark, Todd, one, two, three, one, two, three. So data said pink wool. So the data is what I needed to know. So why did it not set? Why are you not set? Maybe you can't set the data. Can okay, let's have a look on Google see if we can set material material data. So bucket set material data. Setting block material data. No use. See, block state dot set data is supposed to set the metadata for this block. Block state dot set data is supposed to set the metadata for this block, but it doesn't. Oh, you're trying too hard now, Chris. <laughs> set data. So that's what that is supposed to do. It doesn't do it though. Set type. So a block state I can set type and set data. So I can do that as well. Alright, what does that do? What does that do? 
Perhaps you need to set the block at block 3. Well, you can't set block. All you can do is get block. There is no set block function. I'll just double check that. No, there is no set block function. Because if you think about it, every the, all the blocks are there. They're just set to different things, including air. World dot get block at dot set. That's using block dot set data. So that's just using the deprecated method. Cheers, Chris. Let's see what that does. I'm curious to know what that does. I can't remember if I built it now. Yes, there's two new DLC. There's the GP20 Western Pacific and the BR648. And I tell you what, that 648, I love that 648. I was driving that today. And there's a cracking scenario in there. Let's see what this does. You're off work tomorrow, Chris. Wow. See you later. Has to be said, getting this in this metadata out is um, significantly harder than it's, I was expecting it to be. But never mind. Clock, Todd, one, two, three, one, two, three. Kaboom. Provided data is not of type material data, found type material dot wool. So that's the problem we were getting before. So set type to a line number, I take it it was set data. So that was what was blowing up. Line 263. Yep. Calls a craft block state dot set data. Not of type material data, it's a material dot. Whoa. But a material dot world is material data, isn't it? Let's have a look. Let's go to the type hierarchy, so wool. Extend material data. But you're going to find uh, get block dot get state dot update. Ooh, hello, that sounds interesting. Attempts to update the block represented by the state setting its new values. Ah because I'm trying to set the data and I haven't I've changed the to block type, but I haven't um yeah, there's loads of deprecated functions. It's, ri it's ridiculous. So if I call update, so if I change the material type, call update, and then change the subtype. Is that what that's saying? Let me have a look.
Okay. Let's try that and see what that does. Kind of getting random now. Well, it's been random all night, let's be honest, it's been a rubbish, rubbish night tonight. I'm still not entirely convinced how that's, this is going to help, actually, because... I could have seen how it if it was not doing anything, and then let's see. Batman, how long will this take till it's done, roughly, give or take? No, start the server, you dimwit. Still not entirely convinced how that's this is going to help actually because I could have seen how it if it was not doing anything and then let's see Batman how long will this take till it's done roughly give or take so time set day. Clock, Todd, one, two, three, one, two, three, go. Yep, that's still exploded because it's getting a wool. Because it has to be exactly a material data, it can't be a subclass of material data, which is bonkers. The whole point of subclassing. Can I cast it? I can try. <sighs> Batman, can I play Train Sim after this? I don't have a machine that can play Train Sim. This machine can't do it. That's why I'm not doing it. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd be playing it. But next week, I'm getting my my new computer, and that does the uh, that does the works. Right, let's try that plugin, shall we? Server isn't running. Yeah, this machine really doesn't play games anymore. It used to, but not modern games. I certainly can't stream them. I, mean, I can play Train Sim actually quite well on here, but you can't stream it. It runs like a slideshow when the stream goes because it just doesn't have the grunt. Nope, oh, we're still exploded. Yeah, because even though you're casting it, it's still actually being. Um, you feel you really need a post build scripts and the manual copying files around it's getting batch scripts. Eh, probably, but. <laughs> right, disconnect. So I can't set data to something of type wool. Can I do an. like a. clone returns material data. What about cloning it? It's kind of odd. Oh, 
What happens if I clone it then? Because that will then return. Yeah, that but true after update. Let's try that. Maybe it isn't. It sort of feels like the two are out of sync, doesn't it? New specs of the new machine. Core i7 um, 6700K. G, it's a 980 Ti graphics. Uh, 16 gig DDR4. 3 gigahertz memory. Uh, 500 gig PCIe M2 SSD. And I'm sure there's other stuff, but that's a, that's the that's the grunt of it. Right. I think you have to do it after set data as well. At the moment, I'm just trying to get the set data command to work. If the set data command works, then we can try doing the other update. But at the moment, we can't even get the set data command to work without going belly up. No, we're still not getting past that set data command. So the update hasn't made it to where I can get... I can't get that command to, to run successfully, so calling an update after it won't help me at all. Um, so that's not helping me. So let me try the dot .clone, and I'm going to put the update there, see what that does. Try stopping that, shall we? That might work better. <coughs> uh, what's this supposed to be? It's it's essentially it's it's a, like a giant clock, or a countdown timer, or a stopwatch, and it all works. It's just that. It, if you put wool as the material you want it to use, you'll only ever get white wool because it misses all the subtype information. So I'm trying to get it to get all the subtype information, and apparently that's difficult. <laughs> Provided data is not of type material data found wool. That annoys me because wool is a material data. It's just trying to annoy me now. There's something very non OO in this.
Yes, Slayuk, that is exactly what it's saying. What I suspect is it's something to do with the fact that it's checking to see whether or not the subclass instance you're passing is correct for the main material type or something like that. So you can pass in... I can't pass in a stained glass, for example, if I'm trying to set it to wool. I have to pass in a wool subclass. But even then it's not checking for a wool subclass, it's checking for just the main parent class, and that's... It's got one of those! Stop arguing! You want me to try that? Set type update set data with clone update. Alright, we'll try that. I don't think that's going to work, but I'm happy to try it at this point. <laughs> Because I think even though it's cloning it, it's still it's returning a material data, but it's actually returning a, uh, a wool. Yeah, it's returning a subclass of material data, and that's what um, set data is getting the uh, the hump about. Anything is worth a go at this point, Don. Anything is worth a go. Seems to go against the whole point of open heritage. Well, exactly. This is what I'm thinking, Slake. There's something really... Because generally speaking, this bucket API is really good. I've been very impressed with it. But this just seems to have been bent and twisted out of shape beyond belief. It's really quite incredible. Like, someone who did this completely missed the point of everything. Boom! There you go. Still went bang. A legal argument in the section provided data is not of type material data. Let me just grab a... No. Let me grab a copy-paste of that error. Let's Google for that error. But that is deprecated. But that doesn't mean it doesn't work. It just means it'll be gone soon. Okay. <laughs> hey there, Strat Shadow. Welcome. I need to set the material using the block state like that too, so block state dot set type dot set data template dot get state dot get data. Interesting.
So what's this saying? It's saying I need to say destination.getState So let's do block state dest state is lock three dot get block dot get state right and then it wants dest state dot set type to lock one dot get block what is material was mat isn't it yeah dot get type yeah and then it's doing dest state dot set data which is what I'm doing as dot get state dot get data. Ooh, am I doing that? Yes, I am doing that. That's exactly what data is. So why is it your one's going to work and my one's not then? Hmm. Dest state. All I've done now is separate them out. Because if you put lock three dot get block into all of that lot, then you end up with exactly the same bit of code. Can't see how this is going to work. Get raw data and set raw data. Okay, we'll have a look at that in a minute then. Where is that? Is that on the block? I don't even know why I'm trying this bit, but I'll try it. Strat player, nope, no train sim. Train sim is next week. I'm hoping Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday at the latest, depending on when the new machine arrives. Wait, that didn't error. It didn't do anything. Why did that not error? Why did that not do anything? Maybe the fact that it didn't do anything is why it didn't error. Let me pay a little bit more attention to what I've written here. Oh, get state is getting a copy. So get state gets a copy, I change it and throw it away. Get state then gets a copy, I check the data, it explodes. Then I get state. So you have to return it to a variable and then update it. That's why that's this is different. Okay. Now tell me why you're not working. Let's try the update true. Not get state dot set raw data. Okay. So that's why that's that's blowing up, I think, because every every time I do lock three dot get block dot get state, I'm getting a new state. That makes sense. I'll do update true then and we'll see what that does. What I'm also gonna do while we're here is having got the state, I'm gonna do get logger dot info raw and get this state dot get raw data it's deprecated I can't use it <laughs> it's another deprecated function lock three dot get block dots I can't think you set state no you can't set state That gets the value of that. I don't need to. That doesn't actually help me at all. That just tells me more detail about it.
So update attempts to update the block represented by the state stepper and setting it. Force updating force comma true. Okay, let's leave that as an update true and see what that does. Yeah, you can't cast a class instance into a byte. That certainly won't work. Uh, yeah, cheers, mole man. This has been a bit of a sort of a disaster of a stream, really, but never mind. We're getting. I think we're getting there now, finally. Clock Todd one two three one two three Yes Ugh, that was a journey. Alright. <laughs> now let's fix all the rest of the code and see it all working. So at the bottom at the right of the the very internals at digit renderer where we actually do a set block you need to have access to and I'm going to ca encapsulate this into a class uh, and I'm going to call this a um, uh, a block uh, block data um, and in here now check with stained glass. All right. I'll humour you. Let's check where it's stained glass. Wait for the server to come up. Stained glass. Boom. There you go. Let's try a different colour just to prove we can. And it isn't just fortunate that, uh, or luck that we picked the default. There you go. That all seems to be working fine. We got there. Right, so in here I want a material material data uh, private material material um, block data material data Right, so that's got my data block. 
which means that digit renderer is going to actually take a block data and in here having got the block I'm going to do what that's doing so I'm going to get um, lock dot get block dot get state get the destination state it's going to be based on block data dot get material and block data dot get material data we will update that block we don't need to do that right so that is block data material one block data material two what should be called set block data haddock I'm not sure what you mean remember you're about 20 seconds behind me thing I do need to do is have a block data for air. All clear simulations, where is uh, TSL? Um, TSL will be back next week. I don't have a machine currently that can run the game, but that will happen. In the constructor, so in the constructor, that is the constructor. I'm not sure what you're looking for. I've put the I don't want to put anything that sets stuff in here because this is a data block, it's not a functional block. This is just a data store. And it wouldn't be right to put functionality into a data store, I don't think. Not the way I'm defining it. Uh, now, what I need to do is I'm going to define um, public uh, static public block data air equals new block data material uh, <laughs> not sure what to put there material dot air so that gets me a constant I can refer to Can I construct material data? No. Oh well, let's see what happens if I pass a null in. We'll see, you know, how, how bad can it be? Probably very bad. But that now becomes uh, block data dot air. You went into VB mode, oh. <laughs> I'll uncomment them all in a minute. What I'll probably do is actually make it to where if it's if it's null, I just won't set it. That will prevent that will prevent that situation from even occurring. annoying is I'm going to have to rewrite a lot of these functions when I come to do the next bit which is probably not going to happen tonight now given it's 11 o'clock well, let's get this all in and working yeah I don't do copy, um, replace all I've had, to, I've had too many instances in the past where replace all has damaged the code I didn't want it to and I didn't find out till too late on so I do it all now by hand because I can do it quicker more accurately well not quicker but more accurately and less damagingly 
bear in mind that in my career I've worked on critical systems that you need to make sure that you know every change that's been made to code. Now I could you can you reuse the diff when you commit back to subversion, but it's uh, I just grew to trust doing it myself rather than relying on search and replace. I used to wind one of my colleagues up no end. I'm fine with that. <laughs> right, what I am going to do then is uh, if block data dot get material data equals uh, not equal null, I will do that. So that now fixes digit renderer. Now I have to fix time renderer. Shouldn't you have unit tests? Yeah, well, there was those as well. Uh, look, data, but I don't really. I just, just my style. I just don't don't like search and replace in a lot of cases. And yeah, I know it drives people nuts. That's a block data, block data, block data. That calls block data air. Why on earth are I using brackets for one line? Um, it's a good practice to get into. If you um, if you just have um, that, which is perfectly legitimate, um, the next time you come along and you add another line of code, the number of times I've seen juniors expect that to work has driven me nuts so I drum it into anyone I use I see now always put brackets in rather than coming back to remember to put the brackets in always put them in it costs nothing it actually visually looks terrible no I actually prefer it to be there I much prefer it to be there drives me nuts in fact he had a, used to work with another guy uh, who had exactly the same opinion and um, after he spent three hours trying to find the debug a problem he was having and it turned out to be precisely this um, he um, he changed his entire way of doing it so he now puts the brackets in, in it. and any capable IDE will tell you if you mess up like that well why rely on the IDE always put your brackets in it's easy <laughs> Um now it's not that I'm looking for, it's a digit renderer. That one is there. I guess we're going to have to agree to disagree outdated version. <laughs> it's a different style and it's how I've always done it and I found it the safest way to program. Uh, bus driver GP, what's happened to playing train sim? This machine can't do it. Um, so uh, I, I'll be getting a new machine next week and uh, next week we'll be able to play train sim again. But no, my other machine that I was using died some time ago and uh, so I, I can't run train sim. This machine can run it, but it can't stream it. I tried, and everyone hated it. So, all right, that's the time up. So I've got the time renderer. Now we need the time up data. Where are our problems? So that needs to be a block data. That's done. Now we broke everything else because they all use those. Which is fine. I was expecting that. I'm going to get rid of all this rubbish here. We don't need it anymore. Set back material. Oh, the interface. I clock needs to be changed. 
Oops. Okay. Right, is that done? And I don't need material data there anymore. Time of day clock is now showing us fixed. Excellent. That's now showing us fixed. That's now showing us fixed. Why is nothing showing us... Why is something not showing us broken? Oh, it's all commented out, that's why. In the main class, we've got our test function, which I'm going to just comment out for the time being, until I've proven I don't need it. And then this is the stuff that we commented out because it was getting in the way. Which means that this is now going to go pop because I want to set that to be new block data. Block one dot get block dot get it's that one. Lock one dot get block dot get state dot get type material material data don't tell me it's material data and then oh, it's material data first who designed this rubbish the short answer is nobody and that's part of the problem. Right. And now I need to do a set back material, which is lock two and lock two. Hey there, Tony P one eleven. Actually I can optimize that down a little bit. Let's put a helper constructor in here. Block data block state and then that can set material data equal block state dot get data material is block state dot get type that way I overload the constructor so that it passes that in now in here I only need to pass in one parameter Better. Right, let's run it. What can go wrong? Try it again. Good. DGG designed it. <laughs> it's a bit harsh. Okay. So, let's go ahead and put a clock on here using um, our purple stained glass. We have purple stained glass. Let's put a countdown on here with some wool, shall we? So we'll have, we'll get rid of the sign and that, and let's put some uh, let's have yellow wool 
on um, a blue background. That's nice. That's going to be lovely, that is. Uh, so we want yellow wool on a blue background. And this will be Todd. No, clock. Todd. Well, let's make this one a countdown. Uh, variable is CD1. And we don't care about the last parameter. That should probably have a square bracket at the end. And I should now be to do clock, clock, countdown, start, CD, uh, set, CD, one, two, oh, three, oh, oh, slash, clock, countdown, start, CD, one. Ugh, there you go. No, I didn't hear about that, Dave. Whoops. <laughs> so I need to get rid of some log spam that's going on, but there you go, we've got a countdown timer going and we've got a clock going. And that's now using materials and subtypes. Woohoo! <laughs> that's been a real journey tonight, but we got there in the end. It's nice and easy to see this clock, isn't it? Let's just change the materials. Let's put sand on it. Why not? That's why not. Twit. Die all right. Oh, hello. That's interesting. It's putting the stained glass back. That's very interesting. I wonder why it's doing that. Oh, because both clocks are running, that's why. Of course, I can't stop clocks, so they're both actually fighting in the same space now. So we've got two clocks fighting. Oh, with 33 seconds to go on the countdown now. One of the next things to do is to actually start recording all of the clocks we've got running and then I can make it to where it won't let you start another clock. <laughs> Mind you, blowing the sign away should have got rid of the other sign once we do that code in there. Oh, we're doing the countdown timers now announcing to the, s to the system. Excellent. Alright then folks, I'm going to call that a night. It's 11 o'clock. Uh, we've got two out of the seven jobs <laughs> to be done, um, and uh, I will uh, carry on tomorrow uh, with the changing direction stuff and persistence as the next two major jobs to be done, um, and uh, we'll see how we get on with that. So, thanks very much, everyone. I hope you've enjoyed. <laughs> it's been really frustrating, but we got there in the end, so I'm quite pleased with that, and I'm quite happy with the solution. It's not using any deprecated methods, so that's good. Yeah, it's time to end. <laughs> thanks, God All right, then, folks. Thanks a lot, and I'll catch you later on uh, tomorrow from about 8.30 or so. All right. Bye-bye.